Hey, what's up guys? This is Neil Reyes and I want to welcome you to today's episode of Champions Minute. Today we're continuing our series on the types of prayer and today's prayer we're covering is the prayer of supplication. Get ready. Drop the Today's topic that we're going to be discussing is called the prayer of supplication. Again, today's topic that we're discussing is called the prayer of supplication. This week and next week, if you've been following with us, we're going through a mini series where we're discussing the different types of prayer that are discussed in the Bible. There are nine different main types of prayer that are discussed in the Bible, and we're going to be covering those this week and next week. That way you have a better understanding of the different types of prayer that are out there. Now, the reason why that's important is we've said it before. In many cases, the reason why people's answers, or I'm sorry, the reason why people's prayers are not answered is oftentimes because they're not praying in the correct manner. In other words, there are rules or certain rules that govern prayer. And what we're doing this week and next week is we're discussing the different types of prayers that are out there in the Word so that when you encounter a situation or need or desire in your life, you know how to provide or apply the correct type of prayer to your situation. That being said, there's other reasons why people don't get their prayers answered sometimes as well. Sometimes they just simply say a prayer, but they don't put no faith behind it. Other times they say a prayer, but it doesn't line up in accordance with the will of God for their life. So it's not answered either. Other times I heard Kenneth Copeland say one time that people are praying the right thing. They're just not doing it enough. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to move on to our next prayer that we're covering. And today's prayer is the prayer of supplication. Now, the first question that comes up when we talk about the prayer supplication is what exactly is a prayer supplication and why do I need to use it? Well, a prayer supplication is simply this. Sometimes people confuse the prayer supplication to be a casual request or a casual prayer. I will tell you that there is nothing casual about praying. In fact, sometimes we hear people say that when they're going through a tough situation, all you can do now is pray or all you can do now is put it in God's hands. I'm going to tell you that you need to get to a place within your mindset that when you need an answer, the first thing you do is take it to the throne. You take it directly to God. In other words, prayer is not the last thing you do. Prayer is not the only thing you can do now. Prayer is the first thing you do. And you take it directly to the throne by praying to the Father in the name of Jesus. Now, what a prayer or supplication is, as again, it's not a casual prayer. The prayer of supplication is a humble prayer. It's a humble request that you make unto the Lord. In other words, prayer of supplication deals more with the manner in which you pray rather than the words in which you say or the content that you're presenting before the Lord. And by content, I mean when you're wordsmithing. Sometimes when people pray, sometimes people have good vocabularies. And so if they have a good vocabulary when they pray, it may sound more eloquent than yours. But I will tell you it does not take an eloquent prayer to make a prayer work. What makes the prayer of supplication work is that it deals with the manner in which you prayed. It deals with your condition of your heart. It deals, it's a humble request that deals with the manner in which you prayed and it deals with your heart. I will tell you that if someone does pray around you and they sound very eloquent, they may not necessarily think they sound eloquent. That's just how they speak. That's their vernacular. That's how they, that's their depository bank in their, in their mind of the vocabulary that they use. And there's nothing wrong with that. But other times when people try to pray and they're being haughty about it, or they're trying to boast on, look how fancy I pray. I will tell you that those prayers don't avail much because they're done in the wrong manner. Like I said, the prayer supplication is based around, it's a humble request, a humble prayer that deals with the manner in which you pray. I want to go ahead and get right into some scripture and give you some scriptures that back up what the prayer supplication is, and then we're going to explain how to use and apply it to your life. If you have your Bible, I want you to turn to Philippians chapter 4, and we're going to go through verses 6 through 7. Let's read. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. 
Now, what you will notice is that there's a reoccurring theme to all the different types of prayer we're going to show you. Every type of prayer starts with you asking. It tells us in the book of James that you have not because you ask not. It starts, prayer starts with a form of asking, but prayer must always end with a form of thanksgiving or giving thanks to God. Why? Because when you pray, you're supposed to believe you have already received the answer to what you've prayed about. You're supposed to believe you've already received that thing you prayed for. And the way you show that is by operating in faith. And the way you illustrate your faith is by presenting true and genuine thanksgiving to God, thanking Him for that answer. And every time that thing pops back up in your mind and you think about it, you simply thank the Lord for it. And if you have to thank Him a hundred times within one minute, then you thank Him a hundred times within one minute. Remember, this is called Champions Minute. If you don't know what that means, my name is Neil. And the name, meaning of the name Neil is champion. When I first went before the Lord and asked him what he wanted me to call my broadcast, the Lord told me he wanted us to call our main broadcast Champions Walk, which meant Neil's Walk. In these short teachings, he wanted me to call it Champions Minute. And what we're basically discussing is these are things that I have operated and used within my own life. These aren't things I just pull out of a book or pull off of a teaching I hear from someone else. and I'm like, that's good. I need to teach that. No. I'm led by the Holy Spirit to teach on things that He's shown us and that we practice. So remember, a prayer supplication deals with your heart. Now when it talks about this, other translations also talk about Philippians 4, 6-7, that He'll give you the peace that transcends or surpasses all understanding, and that that peace helps to guard both your heart and your mind. Why? Because that's where doubt tries to fester. Doubt will always try to enter your mind, and by entering your mind, it'll try to worm its way down to your heart. I will tell you that it's possible for a person to doubt with their mind, but not doubt with their heart. But if you don't deal with doubt, that once it enters your mind, eventually it can try to worm its way down into your heart. And when you doubt with your heart, that's when you're doubting God's ability to actually do that thing you've prayed for, or it's you doubting that He actually has the ability to perform what His Word promised He would perform. When doubt gets in your mind, you need to get it right out. You need to take hold of those thoughts and cast them down. You know, it talks about how you don't let birds roost in your hair, nor should you let doubt roost in your mind. Let's go ahead and move on to our next scripture. The next scripture I want to read to you is out of Ephesians, and it's going to be 618. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Sometimes people have a hard time of understanding what the saints mean. If you come from a Catholic background or if you're in the Catholic faith, the saints that you're taught to are the people who live what they would consider by man's standard extraordinary lives of holiness who are recognized by the Catholic Church. Now, it's nothing wrong for the Catholic Church to uh, acknowledge those people. But I will tell you that when we start to exalt any type of person higher than the Lord or on the same level as the Lord, we're almost holding it up as a false idol or deity. So we need to be careful with that. It's okay for us to show honor to saints, that they, that they to people that they believe are saints, that have lived extra extraordinary lives, but you must be very careful that you exalt them to be on the same level as Jesus or the Lord, or that you turn around and you hold them in some type of a deity status. Now, that being said, the saints that that's actually talking about in Ephesians, it's actually talking about saints. That's what they refer to as believers. I remember when I first got saved, I used to refer to people sometimes that, man, you know, I'm a saint. And they'd turn around and get so upset with that. And I can understand why. Because they had in their mindset from a Catholic background what the church held as a saint. And then they saw me. And even though I was saved, they saw my lifestyle I was living. And they said, you are not a saint. <laughs> That being said, I will tell you that it refers to here, praying for all the saints. Saints are considered all the believers. Let's go ahead and move on to our next one. Our next one is out of 1 Timothy, and it's chapter 2, verses 1 through 2. Therefore, I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. I will tell you that this scripture right here describes what the church is supposed to be doing, but much of the body of Christ is not. Let me go through it. It says that he exalts first of all, 
that supplications, prayer or supplication, humble, earnest request that you're praying on behalf of yourself or another, the humble, earnest prayer of supplication. Also, intercessions. That's when you're praying on behalf of another person. You're interceding for them. And as you grow in the prayer of intercession, sometimes the Lord will lay that down on your heart as a burden. It'll be a heaviness. We'll talk about that at other times. We're going to cover intercession later on in the series. But intercession, sometimes He'll lay a burden on your heart or heaviness. And it might be even be for a person you don't even know. The next level it talks about is and giving of thanks, which we're also going to talk about the prayer of thanksgiving, worship, and praise later on as well. But in giving of thanks, be made for all men. All men means all men. That doesn't mean the people that you like only. That means all men. And then it finishes it where it says, because honored, whom honors do, God talks about for kings and all who are in authority. Guys, if you're praying the prayer of supplication, we've covered how to do it. Again, and in in just a quick recap, a prayer of supplication deals with you having right standing of the heart. It's not a casual request, but it's a humble request. You don't necessarily have to back it with all kinds of scriptures. You don't have to write it down like a petition or prayer petition like we showed before. It's just simply you going before God and you're making a humble and earnest request before Him. And as you make it to Him, you're making the request directly to the Father. So you're praying directly to God and you're doing it in the name of Jesus because Jesus is our intercessor that's at His right hand. No one else is at God's right hand except Jesus and Jesus is our intercessor. He said when He went to be with the Father, He would turn around and give us the Holy Spirit for comfort, but He was going to the Father to be our intercessor. And He said that anything we ask of the Father in His name would be given to us. Guys, I hope that you found this teaching encouraging today. As always, we want to remind you to swing by our website at neilreyes.com. In addition to that, swing by our social media and connect with us. We invite you to swing by our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, or our Twitter. And when you go on there, connect with us. Like us, share us, subscribe to us, do whatever you need to do. If you're finding these teachings encouraging, there's a good chance the loved ones around you will as well. We invite you to help share this word and partner with us on that so we can get the good word, the good news, out to the lost. Guys, I want to thank you and remind you that Jesus is Lord and He loves you, and so do we. Thank you, and have a blessed day.